Thank you, Sam. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord on a beautiful day God has given to us. Fall is finally here, and it's in the air, and we're grateful for it. So good that you're with us here or online, and uh, glad that you are here, and we hope that you'll come back and be a part of what we're doing here at, at the church. Check us out on our website, a lot of information, ways and, and places where you can plug in where God may be calling you to, to be a part of all that's happening here. Just a couple of announcements. Hopefully you saw some tables as you walked in this morning. Uh, you'll hear more about that during the, the service today. But on one of the tables was the pledge cards. And we do these each year. And this is after the theme of what we've heard all, all month about worshiping and growing and connecting and serving. And that's what we do. And we do so with our pledges as well. So you should have gotten this also in your email on Fridays. So those watching online as well, you can have that. You can print that out. And you can send that in to Nancy. You can put it in our collection boxes. So you'll hear more about that. And we'll have a chance to, to pray over these. Um, other things going on. Um, if you're visiting with us today, if this is your first time with us uh, and you're here in person, we do have a gift for you at our, our little welcome station just outside the doors there. Hope that you'll stop and pick that up before you leave today. Our church conference, uh, we do this every year, is going to be held next Sunday, November 7th. It's 5 p.m. It's on Zoom. You'll get a, a link to that on Friday in the newsletter, or you can contact me this week. Um, so you can be a part of it wherever you may be. So our charge conference is coming up next Sunday. Um, also next week, don't forget to fall back next Saturday night, Daylight Savings Time. It, it gets somebody every year. But this time, you'll be an hour early, so it's not all bad. Uh, but know that time changes ne next week. Um, so, so just be aware of that. Also ask you to be in prayer for our ASP team. Uh, they are traveling. Uh, some of them are traveling now. Others a little bit later and going up and doing some good, good work for God in the Appalachian area. So be in prayer for them. We'll pray for them again in just a little bit. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. I know that we're rejoicing. We're glad in it already. Let's praise him with some beautiful music. Amen. I would like to invite you guys to stand as we sing about how beautiful our Savior is.
Death is just a memory and tears are no more. We'll enter in as the wedding bells ring. Your bride will come together and we'll sing. You're beautiful. As you're standing, go ahead and greet each other. Turn around and welcome each other to the house of the Lord this morning. If you're visiting with us online, we are glad that you are here today. Let's now join our voices together in our opening hymn, Jesus Calls Us. If you're worshiping at home, this is at number 398 in your hymnal. Please be seated. As we go to this time of prayer, I know that you have things on your hearts that, that you want to lift to the Lord, and he wants to hear that, that relationship that we each have with, with our Savior. So go to the Lord and, and spend some time there and, and give him these burdens. Trust him to take them from you and praise him. Thank him for the joys in, in, in your lives. We have many things to be thankful for. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Spend a few moments in your quiet time with God, then I'll lead us in our prayer together. Let us pray. Father, we sing about how beautiful you are. And it's easy to look around and see the beauty around us, to see the God craftiness around us, what you have done, what you have brought to creation. Help us to see that in each other. The beauty that is in each person because of you. The beauty that is in, within each of our hearts because of your joy and your presence and your blessing. God, we can see that in one another. We can let our light shine. 
so the world can see it and give praise to you. God, sometimes that's hard. And sometimes things are, are so difficult and the world is, is hard and heavy and the things we have to do in this world can become burdensome. But in the midst of all of that, Lord, you say, love me first. Put me first. So help us to do that. Help us to put into our priority list you at the top and trust that all these other things will, will work out for your good, for your glory. For all things work together for good for those that love you. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our, our prayers, you know the concerns that each of us have with each situation that's going on. And I pray for all families represented here. I pray, God, that your will would be done in all of our lives. That you'd give us strength, you'd give us peace, you'd give us guidance. Give us our daily needs and bread. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting today and in any way. Who's suffering physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. We pray especially, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones that we have been praying for this week. We pray for the Amora's family. We pray, Lord, for Roberto and the daughters. We pray, Lord, and we thank you for Christie's life. We trust you that you will give them all of their needs. We pray for Susan Ferris' family, her sisters, those that love her, who is singing beautifully for you once again. We lift up Deborah Pennock's family. All these services are coming soon, Lord, and, and just help us to remember each other in our times of need. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving us Jesus Christ for giving us the Holy Spirit, for loving us so much that he would die on a cross for us so that we may live for you. So we thank you for the joys in our lives. We thank you, God, because we know that all good things come from you. No matter what's going on in the world, we can still focus on you and see your love and see your light and be your love and light in the world. Forgive us where we've not done so. Help us to do so now as we go and serve you. As our ASP team goes today and goes and serves you all week in Virginia, keep them safe. Bring them back to share all the things that you've done. But each day, Lord, it's a service opportunity. Show us where you want to send us. And give us the strength to do it. God, forgive us, guide us, direct us by your spirit. And all these things we ask, we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. song we could ever sing and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you, holy. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder and 
show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Let's sing holy Holy, there is no one like you There is none besides you Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Let's sing this out, I will build. in the band. Thank you. Great job, guys. As we go to the Lord now in this prayer for our offering, we thank you for how you've given. It helps us to do the ministries that God's called us to do, and you can, you can continue to do so in so many different ways. On Sunday mornings, we have our collection boxes, cards out in the back there. If you want to put them in those, you can also mail your, your check to the church. Uh, contact Nancy with that. You can go through your own bank. You can go through our website and give on that, on that button. You also can text Norcross first to 73256. There's different ways to, to give to the Lord what he's done for us. Let's, let's pray. God, thank you for 
this opportunity for us to, to give back, to give you thanks for all your blessings in, in our lives, the way you've blessed this church for so many years. So Lord, receive these, our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, multiply them to, them to the work that you have for us. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be able to give, to serve. So bless the gift and the giver so the works of your kingdom here on earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. remain standing for our scripture reading it is from Joshua chapter 24 we're looking at verses 14 through 18 it'll be on the screen here in front of you if you brought your Bible certainly encourage you to open as we look into these words from Joshua chapter 24 verses 14 through 18 hear these words now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. 
Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would open our eyes to to maybe a familiar scripture for many of us, but that you would make it come alive. Help us, Lord, to see your message, to understand your calling in each of our lives to serve. So Lord, open our hearts, our minds to receive your message so that when we do hear it, we will be doers of your word and not just hearers only. Thank you, God, for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. So we've continued our sermon series on the things that we say that who we are. These are things that we have pictures up all over the church, different places. And so when people come in to our church, they see these things. And they see words like worship and grow and connect and serve. We've talked about these over the last month on, on how we do these things. And as the choir comes and sits with you now, they have been a great example, as the band as well, of a certain way of worship. And so we've looked at that, we talked about worship, and it's a continual thing. We, we keep doing it and doing it and grow. We grow in our faith. We connect with one another. I want to thank Terry Hoy for, for being with us last last week she was was wonderful in that word connect what, what a perfect person to talk to us about that and uh certainly been in connection with her even since she left on things she's about to come back and do a big event for some folks that she serves in, in our church here in the next couple of weeks so we're grateful for that connection still with her and today we talk about serve now, what it means to serve and the sign that we have here in our church says just that serve saved people serve saved people people that that christ is first in their lives people that 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 claim jesus christ as lord and savior that say jesus has saved my life because of that i want to serve i want to give of the gifts and graces that god has given to me i want to give back and in every church I've been in, at every age of different sized churches, there's always that opportunity to do just that, to serve. Yes, we have lists of names that have to be on nominations, that have to be on, on a, a committee sheet that we have to send in. We have the end of the year to fill that out and get it right. But there's so many other places where you can serve. There's so many other parts in the life of the church and the mission and the vision of the church where service of our hearts, servanthood, the love to do so is seen. And your name may never ever be on an actual committee list. So the tables that you saw outside there are, are just that. There's about eight different places plus one for you to sign up, for you to say, this is where I want to serve. This is where God's calling me. I, I want to serve in this way. I, I might not even own a hammer, but I can still be on trustees. I'm not sure I can balance a checkbook, but find out I care about the money of the church. Where's God serving you? Maybe it is to, to help with worship, with mission, to, to reach out and say, I, you know, I don't necessarily want to be in charge of it, but I'll go where I'm sent. I don't know what that means, but I trust in you, God, to help me to say, I serve because I'm saved. So we have these opportunities to, to sign up. So at the end of the service, we'll, when you leave today, we'll hope, hope you'll do that. We're going to leave those tables up for several weeks for you to be able to, to do that. Then there's the plus one, which is miscellaneous. God, I'm not really sure what you want, but here I am. Here I am. Saved people serve. Jesus says, I didn't come to this world to be served, but to serve. And if we're going to follow that example, we're going to follow what Jesus says that we are to do and how we are to follow after what he did, that's when we say, 
here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. That's who we say we are, right? We serve. So what does that mean for you? In this church, we do it in so many ways. You are so wonderful in your giving, of your serving, of helping the people in our community, of, of reaching out. And then with the holidays coming up, we'll hear more and more opportunities to be able to do that, to give to people in need. And to have that servant heart means we have to also have servant eyes. And they got to be open. And we got to be willing to see what's around us and not just have our blinders on and say but what do I get out of it that's not in the equation so how do we serve we serve on these committees we serve in our outreach and our evangelism and our missions we we serve up here on Sunday mornings with the musicians and those that are helping with worship we serve as Sunday school teachers and youth workers there's so many ways so how is God calling you to serve and, and I'm pretty sure, probably 100%, God's not saying, I don't want you to serve. I, don't, I, don't, I just can't hear that. I just don't believe that's the case. But I can't say, oh, Paul, he's calling you to do this. That's, God is calling you to do this. So I hope you wrestle with it even over the next few weeks. But if you hear something today and go, yep, I hear you, God, but where do I sign up? That's what those tables are for. You also see on those tables the, the card I talked about, the, the estimate of your giving card. That's the way we serve. We serve in our finances. We serve in how we give. We serve in such a way that we give to something we believe in. And you obviously believe in the ministries of this church. And your giving has been wonderful, and I thank you for it. So you can bring those. We'll pray for those still. You can put them in the boxes. We're going to have altar calls to pray over all this for the next three Sundays. How do you serve? It's great to say I'm a part of such a giving church because they do all these things. Oh, I wish we could change it to we do all these things. Every one of us to say, yes, I'm, I'm a part of that church. Not just because my name's on a roster somewhere. Not just because my parents went here, my grandparents went here, and so I, I'm a member. But how are you really giving? How are you giving of yourself? And I think this is a pretty familiar scripture for most of us, right? Joshua 24, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We know that. But do we serve in this way? Because verse 14 is so important because it says, Therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Do you sincerely serve the Lord? See, that's the difference in that one letter of get and got. E and O, I get to serve the Lord. I got to serve the Lord so he's not mad at me. I get to come to church and do these things. Oh, I got to go to church because I signed up for something. It is a lot about attitude. It is a lot about the sincerity of your heart. I love this church and therefore I am saved and I want to serve. Where do I go? What do I do? Because what you won't see on those tables is a sign-up sheet for the list to say it's someone else's job. You, you won't find out there anywhere, where can I just kind of, kind of fit in? Fit in is everything we've talked about over this month already, the worship and the grow and the connect. That, that's who we are, and it's time to do something about it. And it's time to serve. And it's time to look around and see the needs of others. And you cannot serve the needs of others if you're not serving God first. He says, put me first. Put me on the top of your list, of your to-do list. Put me on the top of your priorities. And I promise you, God says, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will, will work itself out if you trust me and put me first. And, I've been, and every church I've been in, I've heard people say, I, I want to serve, but I, I'm not sure where. I, wa I want to serve, but I'm not sure I can I'm not, I'm not sure I'm physically able to, or i got a lot of things going on. And every church I've been in, I've had a multitude of people say, as soon as I retire, I'm going to serve. As soon as I don't have to work anymore. You know what those soon as I retire, not going to work any people do? They travel. You take off. Don't wait. Sign up today. 
and serve with sincerity. I want to look past that in this, in this verse and get right to the as for me and my household because that's, that's what we know, right? That, that's the exciting part of, of, this, of this scripture. But that part just, just like it highlights for me when I read it. Am I serving God in sincerity and in truth? Am I doing so in sincerity and what we read this morning, faithfulness? Am I being faithful to what God has done for me and, and called me to do and, and to be? So I look at that scripture, and, and I want to move on past it, but, but I can't. It just, it, it just highlights itself for me. And then 15, now, if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, wow. If you're, if you're unwilling to, to do that, then serve something else. Don't just sit there. Do something. Serve something. Serve somewhere. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable, another version says to you, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, the gods of the Amorites. Joshua's given them some other choices. It's the land you're living in. But then he says the part that we've seen so many beautiful artwork and, and woodwork. People says, as for me and my household, as for me and my home, we will serve the Lord. And so Joshua is talking about not just himself. He goes for, as for me, personally. So it starts there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to serve. And my household. How many of you grew up with, uh, if you're living under my roof, those kind of comments? Well, the same thing for Sunday morning. We go to church around here. It's what we do. But you can't force that. It's got to be individual. Everybody's got to take that for themselves and, and say, all right, this is what I can do. I, I can't play a musical instrument, but I can sing. I can't read music, but I can keep a pretty good beat. I, I, no, I go have a green thumb, but I can help Rick and plant some flowers around here. There's a lot of things that you can do to serve. And then we look at this in a way that's a little different than the individual house owner and his or her family. And we look at this exact same scripture and say, as for me and my household, this is our household. This household is, is our church. Is this how you claim it? As for me, as for God, as for what he's done for me, I will serve this household. I will be a part of the ministries of what this household does. Because we need you. We need you to sign up, to step up, to serve, to allow yourself to, to be used. And you may say, I don't have one talent in my life. You're wrong. God is talented, given talents and gifts to everybody. Your job may be as an encourager. You may be perfect at, at writing notes and cards and sending them to somebody. That's under the miscellaneous out there. I don't know where, God, but I want to serve my household. Put me down. Where's God calling you? Our household here at Norcross First, we claim to serve God and his people, and we do so overall. It's to you. So it is personal. It is personal. I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying it takes all of us doing what God's called each of us to do. And you may have served on a committee for a while and you're supposed to roll off. You love that committee? Sign up again. I just need sincere, loving people to sign up and say, I'm all in, God. You got me. I'm yours. Sincerely with faithfulness because it takes all of us every one of us to do these things and you go on in that scripture and the people are talking and saying therefore we're also going to serve serve the lord for he is our god you look at your checkbook you look at your your calendar and you can see the places and the things that you serve and you can see the priorities of those if you if you really look at it so where, where is where's god in that where is his church as members of any United Methodist Church, you made vows when you joined. 
who support the church through the prayers, presence, gifts, service, and then witness was, was added what, 20 years ago or so. Prayers, presence, gifts, service. Are you making good on your promises? Is this where God has you right now? And if so, I think we're supposed to do something about it. So where's he calling you to serve? When Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. That had to have been quite a, a, a concept for his disciples to hear. But the example was set then for us. He washed his disciples' feet. He ate with sinners. He did things that the world looked at in a whole different way because he wanted to serve and set an example for us. We worship, we grow, we connect, we serve. That's who we are. Who are you? Does this work for you? Is this where God has you to work for him? As for me and my household. So if, I, if I'm saying this as the pastor, it means I, I serve also. And not just because my name has REV in front of it. Do mission work. We do stand out in the parking lot and hand out food. We do things, whatever it is that God calls us to do. And we trust him. And we may not like it. Right? We, God may say, hey, you know, I need you to do this. And you're like, not me surely there's somebody else Moses said I stutter get my brother to do it we, we make up excuses but if God's looking at you and you know it and he's saying I need you to do this I think he means it so I want you to pray about that it's not a pressure thing we need to sign up we need to do these things before the end of the year so these tables will be out there for the next three Sundays I want you to pray about it. God, where are you calling me? What do you need me to do? And I could give a, a list of things if you want. Call me up this week. There's a lot of things that you can do. And, and again, the I've done that before that doesn't, doesn't really work. What's he calling you to do now? So I want us to have a, a, a special time of prayer for this today I want us to think about what this means that saved people serve and not those people this people this person as for me and my household so let's just start with the me as for me I will serve the Lord I have choices there's a lot of different things I can do there's a lot of different places I could be right now all of us can say that so as for me, personally, I am going to serve the Lord. Don't you wish he would have said, and this is how. That would make it so much easier. But God will show you how. And will give you the ability to do it. That, that, that old saying that God doesn't always call the equip, but he equips the called, works. He'll give you what you need to serve as you need to. So I want us to have a, a, an altar call at the end of this service and the next couple of services to think about that and to, to spend time. and to Every Sunday, really, the altar is, is, is open. You don't necessarily need anybody to say, come on down. That is, that is up to you. But no, you, you are invited to come and to kneel down and to think about all the things that we've talked about this month. Maybe to ask God, am I, am I worshiping you the way that, that, that pleases you? Now, am I growing enough in my faith? God, am I, am I connecting with your people the way you want me to? Lord, am I, am I serving? And if so, if not, where do you want me to serve? You can use your pews as well. I'll ask Samson to, to just play some music, just to, to let us be. Too many times we're in such a rush. We're in such a hurry to get to the next thing, get to the next thing. Even on Sunday mornings to, to get going. Maybe sometimes we just need to remember and hear David's words and just be still and know that he is our God. So Samson's going to play a, a little music for us. Sit there as long as you need to for a little bit. Cameron's going to be on the, on the cross for those that are at home. Where's God calling you?
to serve him. The altar is open. Come as you are led. So we have a choice, I think, to make every day that God gives to us. And, and, and what am I going to do today? What, what am I going to, what are you calling me to do, God? And, and Sunday being Sunday being worship day, being Sunday a church day, is the only day that we have to come as a household to worship. But if we're going to say, as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord every day. It takes all of us. Every day doing this. So I hope that you'll stop by those tables, pray about it, look where what, what it says is a write up on them. If you're not ready, pray. Pray this, this next few weeks. Where are you calling me, God? Here I am. Send me. Let's pray. God, thank you for the call that you have placed in our lives to be a part of this church at this time, at this moment. God, everything that's happened in our lives have led us to this moment. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything that's happened. And we can look back over our entire lives and we can see that you were in every bit of it. And now that we are yours, we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have given ourselves, our lives to you. You call us to serve. You call us to get out of our comfort zone sometimes. You call us to get out of the, the everydayness of, of life and stand and boldly claim that you are our God. Show us your way. Show us where we fit in. And 
help us to serve you with all sincerity and truth and love. Because it makes a difference. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we conclude this morning, as you're able, let's stand together as we sing, Lord, whose love through humble service. As you leave from this place today, but never from the presence of God, know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit goes with you to guide you, to lead you, to show you the way to help you be good servants. Go in the name of the Lord. Amen.